I don't know about you people, but one thing that I found really helpful when shooting portraits, especially to keep that done. <laughs> With this one. I think today I'm gonna have to shoot at least one picture at wide open f1.2. Hi guys, my name is Matti Sulanto and I'm a photographer. Today I'm shooting some portraits with my friend Ricardo and our beautiful model Rebecca here. Which camera are you using today? My only camera is the, is the, the Sony A7 III. <laughs> yeah, guys, I'm very bad with my equipment. <laughs> I, I, I'm not very worried about equipment. I'm more concerned about doing, but yeah, this is what I have. I have in here my Sony a7 III, and with the Sony A7 III, I have here a Tamron 2875, which it's a pretty good lens for this camera. It's uh, also quite affordable compared to the other competitors from Sony and Sigma. So um, it's a great, it's a great lens. It's my workhorse. And also, I might use. I'm not too sure yet. Depend how how we're going. I also have here a Sigma. Oh, sorry, a Samyang. It's the 85 1.4. So let's set the light. I'll put this here for now. Today we are using strobes instead of LED lights. Yeah, with strobes you have to always measure to light one way or the other. Usually take a test shot before. I like to use F4. Always F4. Most of the time. But, uh, but also if you get closer, you can get still that little bit of the separation from the, from the depth of field. So uh, yeah, I, the, 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 the four, it's, it goes well for me. The concept of what we want, it can change very often if you not, especially when you're doing something, uh, some personal work. I mean, uh, there is always a starting idea, which can be, shared by a Pinterest board, uh, a drawing, or any image that you might have that you can start as a, as a start idea. But from that, I believe that, you know, it's only our imagination and your crea our creativity that is holding us to do whatever we want. So what exactly do I want? Uh, I don't know exactly. And that, that's a, a very honest thing. I know what I don't want. And <laughs> if I know what I don't want, it's easier to see what is good enough to present and what is beautiful to show to the people. I think that sometimes it gets a bit too, too confusing what we want because it might not be the best we can get. So yeah, a little bit of a philosophical conversation, but those, those are good to have. <laughs> I don't know about you people, but one thing that I found really helpful when shooting portraits, especially to keep that focus nailed and, and everything, is to actually set one of your back buttons as the focusing button that you don't have to be like holding here on the shutter button all the time, because sometimes it, it's just easier to you know, squeeze with a thumb on the back. So for me here, it's like this button and I can pretty much focus anywhere I, I want. So it makes life a bit easier. And there is something not working, but we show it from here. So when you're doing the, the, the focusing, it's going to show these red spots all around. That means that that area is in focus. So imagine that you are shooting on a, on a concert, for example, with all those different lights and many of them red lights. When you're doing it in color, it might be quite hard for you to find the focus. So if you're shooting in raw, you're going to end up with the color uh, picture anyway, but the black and white is gonna help you to get the focus easier. So that's another tip to keep in mind. But today I'm using more of the autofocus, so I'm not using that much, but remember that you might need it. That focusing tip was actually pretty cool. Never thought about it like that before, but I gotta try that sometime. Today I'm gonna be shooting with the Canon R5 and this 
tiny little 85 f1.2 lens that Canon Finland very kindly let me borrow. And I think today I'm gonna have to shoot at least one picture at wide open f1.2 just because I have it. Let's try it. I'm gonna turn on the square format again because I love that for portraits and uh, it's just so nice format and uh, Whenever you're shooting square format, one-to-one, -one, can't really see anything now. Why is that? Because I have... Uh, that's the picture right there. <laughs> but square is nice because then you don't have to worry about uh, if you're going to shoot vertical or horizontal or whatever. And uh, I just think it's the best format for portraits anyway. What? One, one over 160. I'm not sure what the maximum or minimum sync speed is on this camera, but I'm going to use that. Uh, I know it's going to work. Okay, let's make a test picture here and... Not bad. And also the histogram looks pretty good. I'm at f1.2, 1 over 160 shutter speed, ISO 100 and... Uh, this is going to be my f1.2 picture. I'll just take a couple more frames and then Ricardo can take his uh, second uh, setup or whatever that it might be. Let's take a couple more pictures. Can you uh, smile like that? Yeah, beautiful. Yeah, very nice. And yeah, 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 I like that. I like that. Yeah, I like that a lot. Yeah, I'm gonna come a little bit closer still. This works, this works really well. Square format and One more, like, oh man, this is such a such a heavy, big lens. But I think I, I like this lens a lot. But I don't think I, if I would want this for myself. But it's it's really nice to shoot on this. And how 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 is it? How difficult was it to actually focus the lens? Because at one point two, well, um, it's not difficult at all. It seems like the. Canon's autofocus is doing a really good job. The eye autofocus finds her eye and face without any problem and I'm using the continuous focus so I'm, if I'm moving a little bit the camera will follow and uh, of course now when I see this on my big screen there might be some errors but it looks like it, it's doing a really really good job. One very interesting thing when you're using strobe lights in studio is that eventually you always find one light setup that works perfectly or works for most things that you do and and you're going to stick with that and that's good but the nice thing about using the strobes in studio is the flexibility that it gives to experiment to try different things things that you haven't tried things that might work and things that might be a total failure. So this is what we're going to do. Try to get something good or total failure. For this one, I, I want to use the honeycomb. The honeycomb is probably one of... It's the grid up, yes, up here. Yes, it's one of my favorite things in, in flash photography, strobe photography, because you can direct the light the way you want. So I want to make something coming from up and light coming from the side and give some sort of dramatic feel. I'm not too sure if I'm going to get it, but like I say, we're in a studio and we experiment. If you have a, a grid like this on a soft box, you're going to get very soft but directional light, which is great for portraits and it keeps the light from spilling all over the place like on the background or whatever. Your lighting setup looks very professional at least. You have the big light up there and this <clears throat> grid up here, down here and uh, so I have high expectations also now uh, regarding the picture. Expectations! Though that, no, no, that's, pre no pressure, no that, pressure. That scares me! <laughs> so imagine when you look up to this light here Try to think that don't come under, yeah. come about 
Yeah, a little bit. Like, a bit, yeah. 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 Dramatic. What I kind like of, dramatic. Uh, what kind of uh, settings do you have now, exposure-wise? Uh, let me check here. I have one hundred one sixtieth, one hundred and sixtieth of a second. <laughs> I have F4 and I have ISO 100. F4 again. Yes. I told you I like it. <laughs> really nice. It looks interesting, isn't it? And like I said, it's... I have never used this light setup before. It just came to me, something I looked last week on, on, on the internet somewhere. I was like, hmm, maybe this could work like this. And it goes back again to, to the same conversation that we were having a little before. Experiment. Don't be afraid to experiment. If you have the means, if you have the space, if you have the lights and it's all there, it's a waste not to experiment. Yeah, let's shoot a few ones in film. And uh, a few rolls. Yeah, well, I brought two rolls for today. It should, should be enough to... Ah, give me F8. No, not F8. F2.8, that's what I mean. Two more. And this roll is dead. One more. Get one, last one. What? I'm happy, I'm, I'm, I'm happy. Is it my turn? You better bring your A game, Mati. I think there are basically two ways to set up lights in the studio where you have everything under control. You can either try to simulate some kind of a, like a vin window light or something, or then you can just create any light that looks good to you. And I'm just gonna go with the latter uh, option now, and I'm gonna just uh, use a little bit like uh, Ricardo's uh, setting here because he already took a lot of trouble to put up the big light up there. And uh, so I'm just gonna move the small light just a little bit to, to not to just use the, exactly the same lighting setup, but let's see what I can come up with. So my idea here is to use the, the big light as the key light, and maybe just uh, offer a little bit of fill from this light from, uh, from the direction of the camera, but let's see if it works or not. My method for setting up a, a strobe is, to, the output of the strobe is that first I select the, the lens, of course, but then I select the aperture I want to use. And then I just uh, uh, adjust the power of the flash or the strobe until I get my exposure. I will not change anything in camera after I have chosen my aperture. That's my way, your way, maybe something else, but I think it, it, it's a good way to start if you have never used strobes and it works really well for me. I need some fill light, as you can see, her dark eyes are too, way too dark and that is good. I like, can you lift your hand a little bit upper and, uh, and so that I can see all your fingers. Yeah, that's, that's good, that's good. Yep. What happens if you turn your whole body that way? Yeah, a little bit more. Yeah, yeah, like more like that. Yeah, that, that's good, that's good. Yeah, that, no, not so much. Yeah, that's, that's perfect. That is really good, yeah. It works better when she's turning her head. Just a little bit, yeah. Let's take a few more. Yeah, I like that. A little bit closer. Turn your head a little bit more. Yeah, that's good. That is really good. Yeah. I'm happy, I'm happy. It works almost the way I expected and uh, I think I'm, I'm happy. Thanks, Rebecca. And uh, yeah, I'm happy. Okay, that's it. I hope you guys enjoyed this little studio shoot with uh, Ricardo and Rebecca. And big thanks to you guys for having me and helping me out here. Make sure to check their Instagram accounts for more action and more pictures. And uh, I'll see you in the next video. See you. See ya. Bye. <laughs>